Hello everyone. Welcome to VLSI Academy. This is 15th lecture and today we will learn about latency modeling and how do we define timing constraints. We will try to understand constraining of input paths and constraining of output paths. Before we start defining the constraints, first let us see what is meant by clock latency and how do we measure it. So clock latency is actually the time taken by the clock to reach from the start point. Let's say this is our start point CLK and it has to reach to the end point. So the end point could be this or it could be this. So wherever the end point is, based on that, the latency will vary for each flip flop. And so there are two different types of latency major, majorly. So the latency, let's say this is your design, this dashed box, this is your design. So your clock will be entering from this port. Let's say the name of this port we will give as capital CLK port. So clock is entering here and that means your clock source, this clock source is sitting outside of your design. So it will be coming from clock source to clock port of your design and then from this clock port it will hit inside and it will go to all the flip flops which are inside your design. So the latency that the clock is taking to reach from this clock source till your clock port that is outside of your design. Outside the design there is some latency because clock source is not available in all the blocks of the design. It will be only in one design, only in one block. Other blocks will be having some clock source latency. So the source latency is the latency which is coming from the source till your clock port which you are not seeing. So it will be at the top level that is called as clock source latency. So clock source latency I am writing in the short here and that is also called as source latency and the latency which is inside your design that then your clock port from here till the end point of all the flip flops that will be the network latency. So that will be called as NL network latency. So total latency actually you can say total latency L is actually source latency plus network latency. So by definition network latency is actually modeling the average delay from the clock port to the register clock pin and your source latency is actually modeling the delay from actual clock origin that is your clock port to the clock port of your design and using the synopsis tool how do we define this latency is like this create clock then hyphen period 10 then get ports clk so create clock is the command which will create the clock and hyphen period means it will be the period of your clock so one cycle will be of 10 units the unit will be typically nanoseconds then get ports clk so it will create a clock with this period and the port will be clk so the tap capital clk that we have written is the clock port name and it will be starting point of your design you can say it will be the starting point of the clock inside your design so this is how we define it that is first step of constraining then second step is set clock latency hyphen source hyphen max 3 and then get ports clock this is a command for defining the latency so since we are mentioning that it has hyphen source in it so it is a source latency that is from this clock port and latency is we are saying that maximum it can be up to 3 nanoseconds so it can take maximum 3 nanoseconds to reach here and it will hit this port so this is how we define source latency how do we define network latency is like this set clock latency the same command but we do not specify hyphen source switch so if you don't specify that then the latency value is actually a network latency because it does not have source and it will be starting from this port so the port is this net clock clk port and maximum network latency can be of one here maximum of three and we are writing here pre cts because after your clock tree is built up then you don't need these constraints this is only for accurate modeling when you don't have a clock tree built up 
so it is all uh, it is just to take into account the latency part while calculating your setup timing in the pre cts model post cts you can say that set propagated clock get ports clk this command says that now your clock is propagated it is a real clock so you don't need to put an estimated delay calculate the real delay so this is how we tell the tool set propagated clock get ports clk command this is used post cts but once you don't have clock then you don't need to specify this if you have the clock real clock propagating inside your design then you comment out these commands and actual propagation of clock is calculated let us now see how do we constrain the input ports by constraining the input ports we tell the tool to optimize the design with respect to the delay specified hence engine is bound to honor the constraint that we specify however if we over constrain the design then tool is intelligent enough to leave the optimization since it understands that it is really not possible to optimize the design with specified constraints hence we define the constraints at any port so we spec specify that the estimated input delay value let's say in this case of port a so the delay value that path will be taking before reaching the port a so based on this value the tool will optimize the logic that is present after this port a inside our design however the logic which is outside our design is not actually visible to us but obviously there is some other block which would be optimized by some other designer who will be sharing the interface with us so in this case let's say this is the complete path but we will not be seeing it we will only be seeing the port a and part of logic which is before port a is actually present in their design for them a is actually an output port and for us a is input port but in the top level the complete path must be there which will start from this start point and it will end at this end point inside our design and the complete path is like this but while optimizing our design we do not have access to the half of this path we will actually model this path with respect to the input delay that is why specifying these constraints are important now let us see what are the commands that can be used to specify the constraints for this timing path in our case the timing path will be from this input port to this flop so it is actually in to reg path so the command will be like this first we have to create the clock so create clock is the command then hyphen period is a switch where you have to specify the clock period so here 2 means 2 nanoseconds will be the period then get ports so here we have to specify the port name of the clock from where the clock will enter so here this will be the port and let's say the port name is clk so clk is the name of the port where this clock is defined so clock definition starts from this port create clock hyphen period so 2 nanosecond of clock will be starting from this port so this is the command then we specify the clock uncertainty hyphen setup so this command we have already seen that this is used to specify the clock uncertainty at the end point so let's say this is the port get ports clk we have specified right so after this port whatever the end points are so till that point estimated uncertainty could be up to 0.3 nanoseconds that would be maximum uncertainty of 0.3 nanoseconds or you can say up to 300 picoseconds this is the maximum uncertainty from this start point to the end point of all the flip flops then we have to specify one more constraint that is input delay input delay will be specified for the data path so this input delay means you can have maximum of 0.6 delay before coming to this port so input delay will be of this data path and remaining will be for you so hyphen clock is clk clock get ports a so input delay specified at this port a and maximum delay will be of this value 
and it corresponds to this clock this clock is corresponding to this port so this is how it is defined this constraint means that this maximum arc of data path could be of 0.6 and remaining logic will be from a to this flip flop to let's say so this is the value let's say here it is tm tm is your combinational delay inside the your data inside your design so from a to flip flop 2 you have tm and from this starting point to this a port you have 0 0.6 so total data path delay total data path delay is actually 0 0.6 plus tm now let us assume that there is library setup time of each flip-flop so let's say there will be some library setup time t setup we let's say call it t setup is actually 0 0.2 nanoseconds now given these values let us say we are required to find that how much logic delay we can afford given that this is the input delay value we have and these are the constraints that we have so how do we calculate it so total data path delay that we already know is 0 0.6 plus tm this is your arrival time should be lesser than equal to required time required time will be your clock period 2 minus your uncertainty of clock that is 0 0.3 minus your library setup time of the flop library setup time is 0 0.2 now if we solve this equation your tm that is your logic delay inside your data path will be 2 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.6 that will be equal to 0 0.9 nanoseconds that means this is your maximum logic delay that you can have in this data path given this is the input delay that is how we calculate the logic delay for your input path that's all for this video in next video we will see that how do we define output related constraints then we will also see the example to calculate logic delay in the output path and we will also see few more examples in the next video please like share and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to us and give us the feedback in the comment section thank you